Yo, welcome back to a brand new video here on the second YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the new cards that got revealed that are going to be coming out in Crown Zenith. Of course, Crown Zenith is coming out in January, and we got some brand new cards that got revealed in Crown Zenith. If y'all want to go on and show your support on the video by leaving a like and subscribing to the second channel, it'd be greatly appreciated trying to grow the second channel up here. Uh, also, let me know in the comments below what you think of some of these new cards and that got revealed. There are some insane ones. We'll start things off here with Regigigas V and V Star. Regigigas V has 240 HP with the attack Raging Blow doing 100 damage, and then it is 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon, and then it confuses Regigigas. Now, you can pair this with, of course, the V-Star, and you can kind of play Regigigas V like Gyarados, V-Max, and V, where you can play with Memory Capsule and use its attack to take knockouts when they attack you. Because Regigigas V-Star is kind of crazy. It is actually the biggest V-Star card we have ever seen. There has never been a V-Star Pokemon, I don't think with 300 HP yet. They've had 280 HP, but none had 300, and that immediately makes Gigas powerful. Having 300 HP by default is really good. There are going to be decks out there that'll struggle to reach Gigas' numbers. Now, Regigigas does have the attack Giga Impact that does 230 damage, and then this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. Now, keep in mind, Gigas is a colorless Pokemon, meaning that you can pair it with cards like V-Guard Energy and, of course, Powerful Energy, letting you do even more damage. Powerful Energy is the perfect partner for Regigigas. Of course, one Powerful and one Choice Spell, then Giga Impact is doing 280 damage, which is knocking out... V-Star Pokemon that aren't Regigigas, I guess. Now, I think the best way to play Gigas would probably be with either Melanie and Double Turbo. You can actually play this like an Arceus Inteleon deck, mainly because Gigas does work with Charon's Care. It works with Charon's Care, and it also works with um, Dunsparce. So you can basically make like a super bulky, tanky Regigigas deck, kind of like Arc Intel. Um, you don't have the energy acceleration, so if you figure out a way to maybe make that work, you could have yourself a pretty good um attacking tank deck i mean gigas with raiding gardevoir with big charm with v guard energy with a dunsparce i mean bro what's stopping gigas not much it's looking cool it's attack obviously not being able to attack next turn is unfortunate but just play switch it's that simple just just play switch um you do have um v uh, star guardian your v star power you can use ability during your turn. If your opponent has one prize card remaining, discard one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and all cards attached to it. Now, honestly, I don't know how useful this V-Star power will be, mainly because your opponent has to have one prize remaining, meaning that they have to take... Um, they can't just knock out two V-Stars. You, They have to knock out, like, two V-Stars and then a one prizer to get to that point. So I don't know how often you're actually going to use Star Guardian. Its effect is kind of not great anyways. Discard one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. You'd have to, like, boss or rope that Pokemon to the bench to discard it. It could come in handy, don't get me wrong. Um, it could win you games, theoretically, but I don't know if it will win you games because I just feel like it's too niche. It'll be hard to get to the point where your opponent goes down to one prize remaining. Your opponent can also play around the V-Star power if they really wanted to. They can pick and choose what they gust out and stuff, so... I'm not really sold on this card quite yet for the V-Star power, but I think the main attack itself is worth playing. Of course, it's very, very bulky, very, very tanky. And uh, I got high hopes for Gigas. Uh, it's an interesting card. Definitely not terrible. Definitely not terrible. Next up is Simi Seer V-Star. Probably the most random V-Star we could have gotten, but yeah, here we are. Uh, Simi Seer V-Star for a fire and a uh, trouble turbo. Uh, Fireball Fever does 40 damage. You may discard up the five cards from the top of your deck and does 40 for each card it discarded. So you can definitely discard a lot of cards from your deck and do a ton of damage. It's not terrible, don't get me wrong. You can build this up in a turn with Magma Basin and Double Turbo, which is good. The problem is you have to mill yourself, and that can be very problematic. Of course, you can play anti-mill cards like Palpad, Rod, Silene, Energy Recycler. So it could work. Um, and it does do a lot of damage, don't get me wrong. I mean, 40 uh, times, like, 5 is pretty crazy. So, it can hit pretty hard, for sure. We'll just have to see how it gets going. And then we got Ember, Stars, V-Star Power. 30 damage, does 30 damage times the number of energy in your discard pile. So, I mean, the, the strategy is you get energy in your discard, you can hit hard. You can pair this with the Rapidash from Silver Tempest, so keep that in mind. This card does synergize really nicely with Rapidash, where you discard energy from your hand and you do... Your Fire Pokemon do 30 more damage. So you can pair this with Rapidash. Not only does it synergize with the V-Star power, but it also does let your main attack do even more damage. So Simi Seer definitely could be interesting. It'll be more of a, a meme deck, in my opinion. I know this deck's actually going to be like a super competitive meta deck. It's definitely a meme, but it'll be a good meme 
in that regard. Just like a better Infernape from uh, Brilliant Stars, I think the set was. All right, next up here, we got e Radiant Eternatus. This is the card that kind of broke the community. Now, you can't play more than one Radiant in your deck, so you can't play this with Greninja or Charizard, but its ability might make it worth playing over those. Climax Gate. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand onto your bench, you may search your deck for up to two Pokemon VMAX and put them on your bench. If you do, your turn ends. That is bonkers. You literally get two VMAX Pokemon in play for free and your turn ends. The crazy thing about this ability is you can use it on your first turn. Yes, if you go first, you can play the ability. If you go second, you can play the ability. So as long as you have like a quick ball in your hand, you can grab Radiant E turn out of your deck, put it into play for free, and guarantee two VMAXs for free. That is just absolutely absurd. I can't lie. That is just crazy and kind of ridiculous. Now, there are some issues with the turn. It says, one, it does end your turn, which is a big caveat. Obviously, if you get this on your first turn, it's not going to matter. Like, if you go first, it's not going to make a, it's not going to matter whatsoever because your opponent's already going to probably not attack any of those VMAXs. Let's be real here. Maybe doing this on your second turn or your third turn of the game, this will be a little bit awkward because I guarantee you one of the VMAXs will get gusted. The other question is, well, what VMAXs are you gonna, even going to put into play? Well, there are some good options. You got Duraludon VMAX, which could be kind of cool. Putting two Duraludon in play for free is just kind of mental. I don't know if this would work with Arceus Duraludon as a tech card, but of course, you can always put this card back in your hand with the likes of Scoop Up Net. So you have a way to kind of put it out of play if you put it down. Um, you can play it with Espeon VMAX. I think that's a partner I've seen people talk about. You pair with Espeon VMAX. You immediately you dodge all those effect attacks. You can pair it with... Shadow Rider, Calyrex VMAX. You can put two Shadow Riders in play for free, which is kind of insane. That's one of the things Shadow Rider likes to do is you build up a bunch of Shadow Riders, put them into, you put four in play, and you just try to build up energy with Underworld Door. With Eternatus, you just put two in play for free. You know what's even crazy? People have even said this might even work with Eternatus VMAX. All you got to do is just play a couple scoop up net. You just scoop up the Eternatus off the board, put it in your hand, and then immediately you can just put two E-turn VMAX in play for free. And then you get E-turn's ability activated once you take the Radiant E-turn off the board. That's also not even terrible. Like, I actually can see that working too. Radiant E-turn, E-turn VMAX doesn't even sound like a bad deck either. The good thing about this is you cheat the VMAX into play without having to have the V in play. Meaning that you kind of uh, avoid the risk of, like, having your opponent boss your V out and knock it out early on. Which is one of the issues that the format is right now. I've, I've ranted about this multiple times where I think the format is kind of dependent on who goes first and who gets like a boss KO on their second turn of the game because you punish the player who went second because you had a better start than they did. And each turn can kind of avoid that by just immediately putting the VMAXs in play, not having to worry about your V getting gusted. The other issue with the e turn though overall is that VMAXs are kind of on the decline right now. Obviously there's Curum VMAX, there's Mew VMAX, which are pretty good right now. And there's Espeon and Flying Pikachu, but like, VMAXs are just not as good as they used to be. I mean, everyone's just kind of playing V-Stars, and V-Stars are just better than VMAXs, and that's kind of the thing that holds E-Turn back, but there's definitely a lot of crazy combos you can come up with with E-Turn, and I think that it's definitely worth investigating and playing because it does have a very strong and, uh, honestly, a pretty broken ability. This ability, bro, if this card came out, even in, like, Astro Radiance, it would have been kind of nuts, but now when we're kind of out of the way of VMAXs, it's not as good as it could be, but it's definitely still kind of a broken card. Um... Next up is Hatterene VMAX. We had not yet gotten Gigantamax Hatterene. It was the only Gigantamax we had not gotten yet as a VMAX Pokemon from the v video games, but we finally got it. And uh, Hatterene's actually pretty good. Um, of course, with the ability Witch's Domain, once you're in turn, you may move up the two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. This does stack. So if you have, like, I think four of these in play, you can, like, move damage around willy-nilly, which is kind of crazy. So it's definitely not a bad ability. And then Max uh, Divine Wrath is 150. Your opponent's active is confused. Its attack is kind of mediocre, but the ability is actually worth trying out. Being able to move those two damage counters can be good. You can even pair this with other healing cards, and you can have yourself a little bit of a healing deck in that regards, because you can basically, like, okay, say your active takes 250 damage, right? You have four Hatterings in play. You take 80 damage onto your opponent's active, which is, like, plus 80, and then, of course, you can, like, just 
trying to heal even more damage. And that's healing while doing damage. So not a bad card. I'm definitely interested to see how Hatterene can do. I actually really like it. I think it's a decent card. If you maybe pair it with Leafy Camo Poncho, you don't have to worry about it getting gusted as much. So that's a benefit of playing Hatterene VMAX. So I'm definitely excited to try this card out. I don't think it's a good attacker, but I do think that the, uh, the ability has potential. Um, it's not bad. Next up is Sky Sealing Stone. Another stone card. Is this as good as Four Seal Stone and the other one? Well, let's take a look. Um, the Pokemon V, this card says you, gets a V-Star power. Star Order, you may use ability during your turn. And then during this turn, when damage from the attack of your basic V Pokemon knocks out your opponent's active, Pokemon V-Star or V-Max, you take an additional prize card. So... That's not terrible. Getting an extra prize is kind of crazy. Now, you do have to knock out that Pokemon that turn. The big thing you're going to probably pair this with is probably like Drapion V, of course. You can play this with Drapion V, knock out a Mew V Max, and get four prize cards. And then all you have to do is knock out Genesect. So I definitely think this card has interesting potential. Not sure how good it really is. Taking the extra prize is always very nice. And it's one of the best things about it, especially if you knock out a two prize or you take three prizes for doing so. So you immediately get half your prizes. Maybe. Uh, Vikavul V could play this card maybe as a way to like you knock out like a Palkia and you get like five pri three prizes or you knock out a Lugia you get half your prizes and just makes the you win it makes you win the game a lot quicker um so it's interesting um then we got friends in Sinnoh and friends in uh, Hisui which draw three cards obviously not very good and those are all the cards that got revealed so I think the best card that definitely got revealed honestly I gotta give it to Regigigas V-Star I generally think Regigigas V-Star is the best card that got revealed um, I forgot to mention, you can probably combine this with Lugia V-Star and Archeops too, which is also a pretty deadly combo, is you can just, like, use Lugia to put Archeops into play, and then Archeops to your Regigigas V-Star, and maybe play a Charon's Care and stuff, and a Ranguru, and you have yourself a pretty strong uh, duo there. I think Radiant E-Turn is also really good. I'm excited to see how people play this card. Again, V-Max is not as good as they kind of used to be. Um, there's less of them being used, but it's definitely still a good ability nonetheless. Like, this could actually make V-Maxes that maybe could be good all of a sudden a lot better out of nowhere so definitely interested to see how rating e-turn affects the game and what people come up with but that'll be it for me on today's video link down below to uh the pokey beach article if you want to read up on these cards yourselves and yeah let me know down below what you think of them what what, what do you think of e-turn what do you think of uh richie what do you think of the new seal card I'm, I'm very curious to hear all right that'll be it for me folks i will be Seeing y'all in another video. Uh, check out the stream VOD from yesterday, or the other night's stream, I should say, where I played some Superior, and I also tried out that Rat Combo deck. And that'll be it for me. Bye bye